Welcome to the DIY3DTech.com channel. Welcome to this edition of DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, we're going to look at some of the issues I've been having with the uh, QUP uh, printer, and uh, especially on the Z axis. And hopefully, this will help other folks if they're having the sim uh, having similar problems. Um, Basically, I noticed this as, as I was printing parts, um, I was noticing, and I don't know if it's coming out on the camera, these two should be the same height, and we can clearly see that uh, they're not, because they're, they're the same part. So this one was actually printed, um, so it was on its, its side like this, um, and this one was actually printed on its back like that. So you can see that the, that the width of this was printed um, you know actually in the X yeah X axis and then this one was printed with the height in the Z axis and you can really hopefully see I don't know with the light I'll try rearranging the light a little bit maybe you can see you can see the difference is substantially less. So I, I I messed around with the slicer and, and everything for, for quite a bit and, and couldn't come up with anything. Put some po uh, posts out there on the 2UP form. Uh, really didn't come up with anything. And so what I did is I took the gauge which I had uh, developed for bed leveling and put it uh, you know next to the, the Z-axis relatively close because you know the obviously the give back and forth since it only has the one motor. I wanted to get the most accurate run. And then what I did is I went into manual mode on Repetier Host and I sent 10 millimeters to it. So this should move 10 millimeters. Guess what? It doesn't move 10 millimeters. It moves only 8.77 millimeters. Now, the, the first thing you might say is, okay, it's losing steps. Well, the printer's cold. You shouldn't be losing steps. There's no load on it, nothing. So let's go back and see what happens if we send a negative 10 to it. Because if it's losing steps, the numbers shouldn't match. And so as it comes down, notice it comes back to zero. And again, not to be boring, but we send 10 to it. And basically, uh, within, you know, a hundredth of a th or a thousandth of a millimeter, uh, it comes back. So again, we send it back down, and this is what we come up with. So I spent quite a bit of time pulling my hair out, trying to figure out what to do, and, and, and basically I decided there's only one thing to do, is change the number of steps in the Marlin code for the Z-axis to uh, fix this problem. So... Um, it was actually quite the ordeal to go through and, and flash this because apparently for the two up there's multiple generations of boards and I think as best as I can figure this is on the third generation of board where the first two were pretty much custom boards using the Teensy uh, microprocessor and this actually uses the Arduino Mega 2560 Revision 3 with ramps 1.4. Now that whole flashing thing was very interesting to say the least. Uh, thanks to Pegwood out on the form, um, at least got my head straight about it, but it took a lot of hacking. And I'm going to post a new configuration H up on my website, which will be needed for anybody else that wants to follow. Um, but I'll do a separate video on that. But the one thing that I wanted to do uh, was simply, you know, if other people are having this problem to to show how the problem actually does exist because that was the stock configuration. Now what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to reflash it. I'm take me a second here to find um, that section of code. And uh, okay, so I'm just um, now I'm going to reflash it with uh, new code and, and again I'm going to do uh, a screencast on this so it's compiling and, and preparing to upload right now so I'm going to go ahead and zero this out you know um, again 
little bit uh, movement you're going to get in there because of the melamine bed and the jiggling of the um, access because that the printer's on and different stuff. But uh, just while it's it's uh, uploading and comp compiling and uploading, because the gantry does move about half to three quarters of a millimeter in its little jumpy steps there. So, um, anyways. It's now done. It's uploaded. So uh, I'm going to restart Repetier Host, and then we're going to connect to it. And so we're connecting to it, and we are connected. So um, now we're going to send 10 millimeters up. We're just going to repeat what we did before and see what we get. Now I've changed the number, so now you see I'm getting about ten and a half, uh, where I was getting about eight and three quarters before. Now, um, again, this is kind of uh, well. I want to run down and show you the repeatability first before I, again I talk about that, because I'm going to have to adjust this number a little bit because there's I used the initial number um, from my first. So you see, it's now it's got about seven. So uh, again. It just depends on how much uh, tilt, because I'm moving the bed over here, to, you know, how much Z jump it's got. But anyways, you, you can see that, you know, basically, uh, I can just repeat this just as with the other one, and, and I get basically the same repeatable number. So that's the big thing, is that I get the same repeatable numbers. Um, I'm going to kind of mess with it a little bit to see if I can get some interim adjustment for the, the, the Z flopping over here. Um, I'm eventually going to put the other Z access, so I'm really not overly concerned. It's just kind of interesting. So anyways, um, the main point of this is this fixed the problem with my Z access. So I'm going to go print some of these parts and then and see, but you know, I'm now sending 10. I'm basically getting 10. This is a good thing. Where before, I was only getting about two-thirds of, of the movement. So uh, again, I don't know what's different in this. Nobody on the forums really could answer what was different of this. So I did want to document it in, in a video to just kind of show um, that there is a difference, that there was something in this. Um, with, with, with the ramps, you know, in the back, um, I don't know if it's possible to see. I'm going to move the camera, so sorry about jiggling. You know, in the back, you can kind of see the, uh, the ramp board. And for some reason, I've got a green, a green, a red, and a green uh, ramp chip. So I don't know if that means anything. I looked on the internet, and it seems like they're the same version. They just happen to be a different colored board uh, in the back. So I, I have no clue if that has anything to do with it. But uh, again, making these changes for the numbers did uh, make a difference. Now, again, I will post the configuration H file on my website. Uh, www.diy3dtech.com which um, even if you're not having the problem and you want to reflash this for bed leveling because I am going to do the bed leveling uh, piece I, as I think maybe covered out in another video whoops I found I'll throw it on the floor I got the servo in the servo will go right in here and then I'll activate the bed leveling and uh, I got the, the micro switch right here for the bed leveling, which will go in there. Actually, the only thing that's holding me up for this whole project is the M2 screws to go in here to adjust it because I don't want to glue this to the base because part of this whole design um, depends upon these screws to kind of adjust the height and level of this to come down onto the, the piece. And also notice I got the wheeled one. So when it does come down, it rolls on, so I get a nice even contact with the surface. But anyways, I will be doing bed leveling, which will um, mean changing up the uh, uh, firmware again. And that's, again, why I wanted to get in there and be able to, to do this. So hopefully this helped. If it did, uh, please like below. Please uh, subscribe to the channel. We'll be doing a lot more. Um, you know, there are a lot of problems with this printer. There's just no question about it. But it has really been a fun learning experience because of a couple different things. Number one, there appears to be a good community out there um, with the supporting these. 
and you know with that comes you know basically some help that, that other people have been through somewhat of a common denominator so one of the things I do have other 3d printers um, uh, that, that have been purchased you know complete where I basically just send stuff to it and it prints and, and I just love it it's great uh, because when you need to get something quick and don't have a lot of time it's the way to go but I also wanted to really get in and get my you know hands dirty with something and I thought this was a good starting point and, and I haven't been proven wrong with that because again there's a good community out there on Thingiverse that has numerous parts I've also put out parts you know like like this bearing these feet uh, um, you know this whole chassis out there in another YouTube video the spool holder um, everything you know also with, with the uh, conversion to the Bowden extruder and the bed leveler I've taken a mix-up um, of, of this and, and matched it to you know mount on the two ups so again great community out there and again if you want to get your hands dirty and just kind of invent and play around with things knowing that they're going to be problems this is really a great printer to do it and again um, you know has has a great community behind it supporting it so I've just had a lot of fun with it <laughs> it's been a little bit of frustration in a few parts but uh, hey that's that's part of when you build something you have those frustrations so Anyways, again, hope you enjoyed. Subscribe and, and like below, please. And we'll see you in the next video. Cheers.